day that you I want to thank you, Lord, for waking us all up on this great and wonderful day, Resurrection Day. I thank you, Lord, for your, for your love that you have poured out into us, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for going before us and just taking over us, Heavenly Father, and lead God and direct us, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your word that's going to go forth on this day with power, Lord. I thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you just to take over me, Lord. Lord, I don't have anything to say, Lord, but you have everything to say, Lord. Lord, allow the people to hear your voice and not mine. Allow me to see you and not me, Heavenly Father. Take over me, Lord. Take over this day, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So the book I have is a book of John. Amen. I was blessed to have that book. Like I said, this is my first time, so bear with me. <laughs> I hope I do well. I'm going to start off with a little detail of my book. The author of my book is John the Apostle. Um, the book has 21 chapters, which is a pretty good sized book, not bad at all. The original audience, the new Christians, and the searching non-Christians. The date it was written was between 80, 85, and 90. The setting, after the destruction of Jerusalem and before John's exile to the island of Patmos. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Patmos. So who is John? John is a relative of Jesus Christ, amen. He is the son of Zacharias and Elizabeth. When John was conceived, Elizabeth and Zacharias was up in age. The angel of the Lord appeared unto Zacharias, standing on the right side of the altar, said, and said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayers is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a son. And thou shalt call his name John. John, okay, I'm sorry. John was great in the sight of, of the Lord. He was filled with the Holy Ghost while yet in his mother's womb. Amen. So we can pray and have for the unborn child, our unborn grandchildren, for them to be filled with the precious Holy Spirit while yet in their mother's womb. Amen. John the Baptist was unique. He wore odd clothes. He wore camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate strange food. Locusts. And I looked up locusts. Locusts is actually a, a short horn grasshopper. It's full of uh, protein and magnesium and iron, so it was very healthy for him. He also ate wild honey. John was unique. He was different but John did not aim at uniqueness. He didn't care about the way he looked, what anybody said about him. He was just being him. He was about his father's business, amen? For, uh, he was unique as for his own sake. Instead, he aimed, to, he aimed at obedience. He knew he had a specific role to play in the world, announcing the coming of our savior. And he put, all his energy into this task. Luke tells us that John was in the wilderness when God's word of, just, of direction came to him. John was ready and waiting as, as, you know, as we should be, ready and waiting for God's direction and telling us what way to turn and what way to go and what not to say and what to say, amen? The angel who had announced John's birth to Zacharias had made it clear that this child was to be a Nazarite, someone set apart for God's service. John remained faithful to, this call, to that calling. This wild looking man had no power or position in the Jewish political system. 
but he spoke with irresistible authority. People were moved by his, his words because he spoke the truth, challenging them to turn from their way, from their sins, and baptizing them, them as a symbol of their repentance. They responded by the hundreds, but even as the people crowded, to him. He pointed beyond himself. It wasn't about him. He never took credit for anything. Amen. And never forgetting that his main role was to announce the coming of the Savior. And that's a, just a little bit of back, background about my, my book. Now for my Sunday school, actual lesson. It will be coming, um, I'll be starting, in, I'll be jumping around a little bit to different books, but I'll be starting in John chapter four. And the title of my book is, The Harvest is Ripe, Let's Go. That's my title, amen? Let's start reading in John chapter four, verse one. Let me get my book marker. <laughs> uh, okay. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made, made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he, he must, and he must need to go through Samaria. I'm gonna start right there. So to go from the territory of Judea to Galilee meant passing through the central, I'm sorry, the central territory called Samaria. Most Jews did not do everything they could do to avoid traveling through Samaria. The reasons, the reasons why it goes back into history. I'm not getting too deep into the history. Let's just say they didn't really like each other or get along. But Jesus did not live by such restrictions. He didn't care about that. Jesus loved everybody. Amen. The route to Samaria was shorter, and that was the route he took. He didn't worry about all the whatever they had back in history, he just went, because that was the shortest route. Amen. Let's go to um, verse five in chapter four. Uh, okay, make sure I have that right, sorry. Then comes he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sidechair, and I'm just hoping I'm pronouncing it right, Sidechair, or Sidechar, near the parcel ground of, I mean, near the, I'm sorry, near the, near, ah, Sidechar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore being weary with his journey, sat this on the well. And it was about six, about the sixth hour. There come a woman of, a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said, said to her, give me drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then says the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew, being a Jew, ask drink, ask drink of me, which I am a Samarian, of, for Jews have no dealing with Samarians. Amen. So this Sumerian woman, this woman was a Sumerian, a member of a hated mixed race. To be known to be living with a man, but not married and in a public and in public. No respectful Jewish man would talk to a woman under these circumstances. But Jesus did. The gospel is for everyone regardless of race, gender, social position, past sins, it doesn't matter. 
the gospel is for everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, and we must also we must be share, we we must be prepared. I'm sorry, you know I'm nervous. <laughs> we must be prepared to share the gospel at any time and at any place. Jesus Jesus crossed all social, cultural, political barriers to share the gospel. And that's how we should be. Be ready to share the gospel with everybody. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what they did in their past. We need to be prepared to share the gospel with everyone. Amen. Let's drop down to verse 10, same chapter. Jesus answered and said unto her, I'll make sure I have that right. Sorry, okay. So Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that says to thee, give me drink, thou would have asked of him and sorry, he would give, he would give me living water. Amen. That's a blessing. So if we desire more of God, if we're thirsting after God, we will, he will fill our cup until we want no more. Amen. God is the living water. And in Matthew chapter seven, Matthew chapter seven, verse seven through 11, it says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and, you, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receiveth, and, and he that seeketh find, findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man in, in the, or what man is there of you who his son asks bread? Will, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks fish, will you give him a serpent? If, a, if, I mean, if then being evil, know how to give good things unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask? So all we have to do is ask. If we desire more of the Lord, just ask and the Lord will fill your cup until you want no more. It'll be overflowing with love. Amen. Let's go to John chapter 11 now. I'm, on, I'm sorry. Chapter 4, verse 11. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Make sure I have that right. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, the woman with the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. Sorry. With and, and the well is deep from whence then hast thou hast living water. Please she's asking about the living water. Art thou greater than than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? the well and drink thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water, water shall thirst again. So the water that the, that the Sumerian woman was talking about is not satisfying. It does not hydrate you. You keep drinking and drinking, but you still thirst again. Have you like ever on a hot summer day and you're very thirsty, you just got to maybe playing some sports or whatever, and you reach for a can of a pop or, you know, seven or Pepsi or something like that. And you think you're satisfying that thirst, but you're not. It's, it's you're going to always be reaching for the next five minutes, you're going to reach for another, um, another pop and try to satisfy it again, but you'll keep on drinking, but you'll never satisfy that thirst. Or you can have all the money in the world. You could buy whatever you want, anything, mansions, cars, whatever you want. 
but you're always going to have that empty feeling inside. Always. Amen. But if you drink of the Lord's living water, you shall never thirst again. Never. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's um, read John, same chapter, John chapter 4, verse 14. But whosoever, yeah, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I give him shall never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springeth up up into, ever, into everlasting life. So if, you're, if you are accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior and live by his word and being receiving of the Holy Spirit, you shall not hunger or thirst no more. The water that the Lord gives us is satisfying. Fine. He is giving us him. He is the living water. Amen. And this is what people today are looking for. They are looking for the living water. They are looking for the light. That light is Jesus. Amen. And we are living in a pandemic right now. And there is a high rate of mental disorder, a high rate of crime. There are thousands of people dying from the COVID-19 virus. There are people who is looking for the, for, for the light. They are looking for the living water. Amen. They desire to have their thirst quenched. They are looking for Jesus. We have the light dwelling within us, amen? And we need to make sure we shine our light. There are people looking, they are walking in darkness. Let's go back to John chapter four, um, chapter four verse 31 through 34. Thirty one and 34. In the meanwhile, his disciples have prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore, his, therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him ought to eat? So they wondering, did he eat? Did somebody bring him some food that we don't know about, basically? Jesus said, on verse 34, Jesus said unto, unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Amen. And to finish his work. Amen. So, it's time, church. It's been time. It's always time. Right now it's time for us to go out and share the light, to share the word. With people who are looking for Jesus, it is our responsibility to do so. They need us to be the light. They need us. They need to know Jesus. Amen? Even within my family, I know I need to speak to my family members because there are some out there in the dark are lost. I need to go to them, make sure I'm shining a light, make sure I'm sharing the word of Jesus Christ. They need it. Um, let's um, turn to Luke chapter 2, verse 49. I didn't mark that piece off. Okay, sorry about that. I said Luke. Uh, I'm oh, sorry, chapter 2, verse 49. Uh, 
Okay, sorry. Here we go. And he said unto him, how is it that these ye sought me? Why is ye not that I must be about my father's business? But he said, why were you looking for me? Don't you know I was about my father's business? Amen. So we need to be about our father's business. Shining our light, spreading the word of God. Amen. We need to be out there reaching everyone. Amen. Within our family, within the community, on our job, we need to be spreading them where we need to be spreading, shining our light. Amen. Let's go back to John chapter 4, verse 35. Say not ye, there ye, okay, I'm sorry. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then come as harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for, the, for they are white, are ready to harvest. They are ready to be harvested. The people are ready to be harvested. Amen? So the harvest is right. I can remember going like blackberry fishing, picking with my grandmother. And we would, when I was little, and she'll say, Valerie, make sure you pick the ones that are dark and soft because they're ready to be ripe. They're ready to be picked. And they're ready. So people, the people are looking for Jesus. The Lord expects us to go out beyond these walls to reach the people that are thirsty. They are thirsty for the living water. Reach the people who are lost. To reach the people who are ready to accept Jesus as their personal savior. There are also people who believe in Jesus, but they do not know how to have faith. Even in my own family, I have members that are, they know about Jesus. They know he's real, but they do not know how to have faith. They do not know how to pray. We have to be the witness to them like John did. Let's go to John chapter one. Okay, I know I'm hopping around, hope it's okay. But uh, this is how the Lord gave it to me. Okay, John chapter one, verse six, nine. My little bookmarker, six, nine. There was, I'm sorry, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came, wait, I'm sorry. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men, okay, that all men, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me start that back over. Let me start again, I'm sorry. <laughs> My goodness. There was a man that sent from God whose name was John. The same came from for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might be might, might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So we have to bear witness of this light. We have to show this light. We have to tell people about this light. The light is Jesus. We got to spread the word. We have to meet them where they at and tell them about Jesus. Amen. And in my closing, I know this is short, but this is what the Lord gave me. Amen. But in my closing, please, if you we're blessed by the word of God today. Please go out and share this with someone. And share this with someone um, outside these walls. Don't keep it to yourself. I know we're in the middle of a pandemic. We are going through, we're not going out much, but we have other ways of going outside the walls. We have Facebook. We have Instagram, we have Twitter, and the list goes on.
so we still can go outside the wall and spread the word of the Lord so that the people can hear it, so the lost people can be found, so they can come out of darkness. Amen? They are thirsty for the word. They are looking for that light. And the time is now. Well, it's been time. I'm, always, I'm saying time is now, but it's always time. You know, 10 years ago, it was time. Amen? We are the light of the world, and we need to let our light shine, which is the true light of Jesus to the ones who want to come out of darkness so they may come and drink of the living water. The harvest is ripe. The time is now. Amen? Let's be about our Father's business. Let's go out and spread the word. Let's go out and help the people, and help the people find Jesus, the one who was, the ones that are looking for Jesus, the one who are need, the one who are thirsty and hungering after the Lord, the ones who don't know how to have faith, the ones within our families, amen? And I thank you, Lord, for this day. Let's be about our Father's business, and that's what the Lord has given me today for you. I know we're short, but that's all I have, amen? Thank you for taking time out and listening, and I hope this was edifying unto you. Amen. Thank you. Elder Harris. Amen.